Lab Biology students, we are in our last lesson of our energy unit, and today we're talking about energy flow in an ecosystem. So a lot of this we have talked about in our previous three or four lessons, um, but the purpose of this lesson is to just sum up everything in the unit by looking at the overall picture as it pertains to ecosystems. And then we're going to further elaborate on this um, when we get to our ecology unit, which is at the end of the year. All right, so we know that the ultimate source of energy for most ecosystems is the sun, and that sun is going to provide light energy to our producers in the ecosystem. We call these producers autotrophs because they make their own food. Um, and that light energy is going to be converted into glucose and oxygen through the process of photosynthesis, which is something that we talked about a lot in this unit. Um, and we know that the energy that is created or the glucose that's created during photosynthesis is going to be stored in the biomolecules of the organism that's going to be available to the consumers that come in and eat that organism. Um, so when we talk about biomolecules, we're talking about carbs, lipids, proteins. All right, so producers are going to provide energy to what we call the consumers. Um, so here we have the rabbit that's going to eat the grass. So the rabbit is known as a primary consumer. Um, we also call consumers heterotrophs because they can't make their own food. They have to rely on other organisms. They have to consume other organisms to get the energy that they need to power their sales processes. Now, there's different levels of consumers. Here on the screen, we see a primary consumer um, that's going to eat producers. But you can also have a secondary consumer, which is going to eat primary consumers. And then you can have a tertiary consumer, which is going to eat our secondary consumer. And then you can even have a quaternary consumer, which will come in and eat the tertiary consumer. Now, consumers are going to use the available glucose uh, for cellular respiration. Again, something that we talked about in this unit um, to produce ATP. And the primary consumer will only receive about 10% of the available energy from the producer. So when this rabbit eats this grass, um, if the grass has 100 joules of energy, um, only 10% of that will actually move into the rabbit. We call this the rule of 10. So your question might be, well, where does the other 90% go? Only 10% is available to um, an organism that consumes another organism. Where's the other 90 go? And the answer is the other 90 is lost as heat. Although it's important to note that lost um, maybe is not the best word to use because we learned in physical science that energy is not lost. It's not created or destroyed. It only transfers from one type to another. So that's really what we mean here when we say that 90% um, of the energy is lost. All right, so this energy flow is going to continue through the ecosystem. Uh, passing only 10% of the available energy from one organism to the next. So you have the sun that's going to provide light energy to our producers. Our producers are going to then pass on that energy to primary consumers, who will then pass on that energy to our secondary consumers, who will then pass on that energy to our tertiary consumers, um, and so forth and so on. Um, there are four types of consumers. We can have herbivores that eat eat only plants, so like our rabbit here. Um, you can have carnivores, which eat only meat, um, so that would be like our bobcat. Uh, and then omnivores, which eat plants and animals. Uh, and then detrivores, which would be like our decomposers. Now there's different ways that we can illustrate energy flow in an ecosystem, and one simple way to do that is with a food chain. Um, and I know you're familiar with food chains, so we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time here but you do need to know that in a food chain, um, the arrow points in the direction of the energy flow. So you can see here how the energy moves from the producer to the primary consumer, from the primary consumer to the secondary consumer, from the secondary consumer to the tertiary consumer. Now, a food web can also depict energy flow in an ecosystem, but a food web is different from a food chain because it's a little more complex. It's going to show multiple feeding relationships within an ecosystem. Um, so I'd like for you to pause the video now and see if you can identify the producer, herbivores, omnivore, um, and carnivores in the picture. 
And then of course you can check your answer. So we have our producer, um, we have our herbivores, um, there is a carnivore, two carnivores, and then um, the mouse will be our omnivore. You can also depict energy flow in an ecosystem through what's called a trophic pyramid. Um, and it is important to note that as you move up the trophic pyramid, the amount of energy and the number of organisms decreases. So with a trophic pyramid on the bottom is always your primary producer. Um, they're going to supply us with the most available energy. They're going to be the most in number in a healthy ecosystem. Um, and then we move up, we can see the primary consumer and then our secondary consumer. Then we have our tertiary consumers at the top. Sometimes these are called apex predators. They're at the top of the food chain. Um, and the available energy decreases as you move up the pyramid. So the very top of the pyramid, our tertiary consumers, are always going to receive the least amount of energy and will be least in number if this is a healthy ecosystem. So earlier we mentioned the rule of 10, which just says that 10% of energy moves from one trophic level to the next. Um, on a trophic pyramid, um, and 90% of that energy we know is lost um, to each energy transfer. So if I start out with my producers, they're going to have 100% of the energy available. Uh, but if we move to the primary consumers, so when our primary consumers eat our producers, only 10% of that energy is going to move. Um, so they only actually receive 10%. Um, and then as we move again, only 10% of that energy moves into the secondary consumers. So they're only going to get 1% of that available energy. And then another 10% um, will travel to our tertiary consumers. And so our tertiary consumers are going to only receive um, one tenth or 0.1% of the available energy um, that was originally available at the producer level. Um, here's an example of how you might see it on a quiz or a test or a worksheet. Um, so if you look at the yellow box, it says if 2,000 kilocalories is available to the producers in this ecosystem, how much energy will be obtained by the tertiary consumer? So our tertiary consumers are at the very top. We're starting with 2,000 kilocalories at our producer level. Um, and so we've got to do some math. So um, our primary consumers are going to get 10% of 2,000. So I'm going to just drop a zero. So they're going to get 200 kilocalories of energy. And then our secondary consumers are going to get 10% of that. So again, I'm just going to drop a zero. That's going to give me 20 kilocalories of energy. And so our answer, how much energy would our tertiary consumers consume? Um, well, they're going to get 10% of 20. So drop another zero, and that gives us two kilocalories. Pause the video and see if you can identify the producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer in this food web. Hopefully you um, identified the grass as the producer. We had a couple of primary consumers, so the grasshopper, caterpillar, and mouse. Um, our secondary consumers were the lizard and the mouse, and then we have the owl as our tertiary consumer, also known as the apex predator in this particular picture. Right, if you're given a food chain and you are asked a question like this, so the grass contains 4,700 kilocalories of energy, how much energy would the primary consumer obtain from eating the grass? Um, well, they're going to get 10% of 4,700. So again, just drop a zero. The answer would be 470 kilocalories. Um, and then that secondary consumer, so that lizard's going to come in and eat the grasshopper. It's going to get 10% of the 470 kilocalories that's available. Drop that zero. We're going to get 47 kilocalories. And then our tertiary consumer, our owl, is going to eat that lizard. It's going to get 10% of the energy that's available to the lizard, which is 47. And so 10% um, of 47 is going to be 4.7 kilocalories. All right, that sums up our final lesson in Unit 3, and um, I will see you in Unit 4.